Well, good morning and a happy Sunday to you. It's not very often that I'm on here on a Sunday, but uh, the Lord woke me up this morning with a word. I have a word for you. I have a word for you. And especially if you are encountering, if you've had direct contact with this coronavirus, if you are a healthcare worker, I have a word for you. I have a word for you. I have a word for from God for you today. If you have enc- if you know someone who is contending, particularly someone who is in contact with someone who has experienced and encountered this virus, I have a word for you. So as you come on, go ahead and share this um, because I, I, I believe this is fresh manna. It's a, it's a revelation that actually I, I, the Lord showed it to me a number of years ago, but I did not uh, I did not, um, I hadn't seen it like he showed it to me this week, the way he showed it to me this week, it's fresh bread. And so as you are coming on, I got a word for you. Please share this with any healthcare workers, anybody dealing with it, having direct contact with anybody related to this coronavirus. Um, go ahead and share this with them. So I just want to start with a quick word of prayer. Father God, I thank you. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Constance. Thank you guys for being on here with me. I got a word from God. It's a it's a revelation. And not only that, I, it was actually born out of an encounter that I had with the Lord several days ago. So I want to share this word and get this out to anyone in the healthcare in- industry, doctors, nurses, CNAs, respiratory therapists. If you are are in contact with anyone related to this coronavirus, I got a word for you today. So Father, we thank you for this word. I thank you for the revelation and the insight that you have imparted to me. I thank you that as I endeavor to release this word, I praise you, Father, that my tongue will be as the pen of a ready writer, that I will speak the oracles, the word of God that you have given me with clarity, with wisdom, with insight, and it will be a word from your mouth, not from my mind, not from my thoughts, but from the mouth the heart and the mind of God to bring rest, resource, power, anointing, and authority to his people. We praise you, Father, that this word will activate many believers into the ministry of healing, into the ministry of bringing restoration, wholeness, and bringing total restoration to the body and the minds of your people. So I praise you, Father, for this word. So I just want to share with you guys an encounter I had a few days ago. And, you know, I'm a little reluctant, I guess it's because of some of my own insecurities to say when I hear something so resounding, so that that's, that's like, I've never heard it before that comes to me. So I, 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 my confidence is growing to recognizing something the Lord is releasing into my heart to release into the earth. Well, several days ago, I was uh, meditating and praying, asking the Lord for a solution for healthcare workers. I said, God, there, there, there's got to be a solution. There's got to be something that you can activate because when there are no beds, when there are no respirators, when there are no resources, when there are no masks, what do you do? What do you do? You can panic. You can fall into fear. You can, you can be, you, when you are worried, you're fearful that you can't go home to your children because of this virus. And it's like the Lord says, he says, I am, and, and this word came to me. He said, weaponized. Now, the first time I heard him say that word to me was in relationship to sowing. He says, I'm weaponizing seed. But then I thought he was just talking about that. And then it's like, no, the Lord came back and he says, no, I am weaponizing my resource in the earth. I am weaponizing things that you just used to be, you know, how, 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 when a terrorist wants to do so, how they took an airplane and they weaponized an airplane and they took down the trade center. That was a weaponized airplane. They took an airplane and turned it into a weapon. And so what I heard the Lord say the other day is he says, I am weaponizing healthcare workers. 
I am weaponizing doctors, nurses, CNAs. He says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I am weaponizing you and I am turning you into a weapon against the coronavirus. The Lord says, I am weaponizing healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, CNAs, respiratory therapists, cl clinicians. If you are related to the healthcare field, the Lord has a word for you. He says, I am weaponizing. Weaponizing you. I am turning you into a weapon against this virus. I am weaponizing healthcare workers. And so now whenever God gives you something like that, you have to back up and say, okay, God, thank you for that. But I need to see it in scriptures. Show it to me in your word. And so the Lord took me to Malachi chapter, chapter to Malachi chapter four. So you guys, I got my Bible on this side. So I got my computer on this side and I got my camera in the middle. Okay. So he took me to this scripture. He started in Malachi chapter four, verses two. And he says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth as calves of the stall. Now let's break this down because there are multiple pieces in here that remember what is what are we saying? God is weaponizing healthcare workers. He is turning you into a weapon, Erica. He's turning any people in anyone taking care or working with or supporting healthcare weapon healthcare workers constants god is weaponizing any he's weaponizing believers he's weaponizing healthcare workers because we're in a season now where there are no natural solutions what's ha what they there aren't enough respirators they can't make enough there aren't enough masks people can't find masks so god is say he is turning healthcare work he's weaponizing healthcare workers and he took me to Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 he says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth as calves of the stall. Now let's break that down. We're going to read this same passage in the message translation. It says, but for you sunrise, the son of righteousness will dawn on those who honor my name. So if you are a healthcare worker, a believer, and you honor the name of Jesus, he says healing radiating from its wings, you will burst forth with energy. He says like colicking frisky cow, uh, uh, calves in the, in the field. Now what that, that last phrase is in reference to, it is an analogy and a comparison. When, when I grew up on a farm, so when you would feed the calf, when the calf would eat, it would get a resource. When it would eat, uh, it would either nurse from its mother and then you let them out in the field. They would take off running. They would take off with energy. They would take off. And you would see just all of a sudden this little calf to just run as fast as it can with this burst of energy. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, Lord, so you are imparting a resource of energy and supernatural strength and capacity to go forth and to do something. Okay. And it says, and you will trump on the wicked. They will be nothing but ashes under your feet in the day. Now we're not talking about people. We're talking about a supernatural, a supernatural entity released into the earth to bring destruction and fear, Marcella and Teresa. And it says, and, and this thus says God of the angel armies says so. Okay. Now in the, in another translation, in a new international version, it says, but here is what will happen for you who have respect for me, the son that br will, the son that brings life will rise. Its rays will bring health to my people. You will go out and leap for joy like calves that have just been fed. Now, what we know about this virus is that it does not like light. They've even said, take your mask, 
Put it in the dash of your car. Let the sun shine on the mask and it'll kill the virus. So we know that light will bring the virus out, right? Now we're talking about weaponized healthcare workers. And so then the Lord says, so that's your first passage. The son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth. He also talked about the dimension of light coming out of you. It says, the sun that brings life will rise. The sun will rise. We're talking about weaponized healthcare workers. Now, let's go to Psalms 91 because now we need to understand where this concept of the wings, the son of righteousness arising with healing in his wings. The healing is in the wings of the son of righteousness. Y'all got that? Kristen, Josie, Teresa, you got that? The healing is in the wings. You got that? Do y'all get that? Y'all hear that, right? Okay, now let's go to Psalms 91. It says, Psalms 91, 1, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, Angelica, he, uh, Marcella, my God, in whom will I trust? Verse 3, Surely He will save you from the fowler's snares. Okay? Surely he will save you from the foulest traps, from the deadly pestilence. He will save you from the deadly pestilence. Verse number four, we're talking about the son of righteousness arising with healing in his wings. Okay. Now verse four, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. Okay. Now, so where healthcare workers, where are you? You are under the wings of the most high, right? So you are under the wings. You are under the wings. Now, what did he just say? I will arise with healing in my wings. Now it gets better than that because now we've got to tie one other passage into this. We're going to go to Isaiah 60 verse one. It says arise. And what's the second word? Does it say shine? Arise. Now he just said the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Where are we in Psalms 91? We are under the wings of God. So when the son of righteousness arises and the healing is in his wings, well, who's under his wings? You are the healing that's under the wings of the son of righteousness. It is you. You are the one in Psalm Isaiah 60 that is going to to arise. So God is saying, I want to, you are going to arise and you are going to shine for the light has come. Well, where is the light? The light of life is in you. Okay. It is the illumination of you. So when you step into that room where there is no other resource, you are the light that God is going to activate. You are the one that God is going to turn on. You are the one that is under the wings of the most high that he, as he is arising. Well, where are you? You're under his wings. So when he arises and extends his wings, you are the light. You are the one under under his wings that releases the healing that's in the wings of the, of the, of the son of righteousness. You're it. You are the light that has come. You are the light that's in that opera, that, 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 that emergency room. You are the light. And so what God is saying, I want to activate you and turn you on. You, I want to activate you because the light that he needs to release into a place. Now let's go a little bit further because it's really important that you guys. So let's look at Isaiah 60. Okay. Go to Isaiah 60. It says, arise, shine for your light has come. Now, where is the light? The light that we're talking about is the light, a light of a life that's upon every believer. That's upon every person that knows the name of Jesus. That's on every person. You guys, I'm so excited about this because it was such a revelation for me. So when the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings, the people who have been placed upon the, the wings of the most High are those who believe and honor, respect the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
If you honor, respect, and believe that name, and you have been saved by the power of that name, you are the light that he is talking about in Isaiah 60. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. Well, what is this? Where does this, what does this virus need to thrive? It needs darkness. It needs darkness. When the light hits it, it dies. So you are the light that God is activating in every room, in every hospital. in every, So I speak and decree over every nurse, over every Dr. David, over every, every CNA, over every clinician, over every janitor, over the one who's taking out the trash, over the ones who are rolling the body, the ones who are rolling in the body. Allie, Allie, the Lord, Allie, when Allie Peck, when I, the Lord activated this insight when I saw your, when I saw you, uh, your, your, I saw your name, the other day. And I remember the love that you shared when we were in the hospital with my sister and the Lord, and, and there's such a compassion rolled up in my spirit for you, Allie, that the Lord began to stir this word. And then this morning, as I got up, he says, yes, Stella, this is the time that you need to teach it. I want you to teach it. And I want you to release it. So the light that arises is you. The light that comes up is you. The healing that is under the wings of the most high God is you. So when you show up, it says darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. So the thick darkness that's in those hospital spaces where they say they have no respirators, they have to decide who's going to die, who's going to live, where they say they have, no, the Lord says in the name of Jesus, not so. He is sending a solution. He is sending a weaponized healthcare worker into that space. He is sending a weaponized healthcare workers. Now, I told you when the Lord stirred this in my heart, I had a prophetic vision. I had a, I had a snapshot. And it's almost, I, I, was sta- I was in my kitchen and I was thinking about this passage and I saw a flash of it was like a giant bird, but it looked like an airplane. It was like a giant bird. And I was like, what in the, and this giant bird has extended its wings. I saw like hypodermic needles being shot out from under there, under the wing. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of deep. Okay. And so as I looked at first, it looked like, it looked like hypodermic needles, but then I stopped and I looked and it was people. It was people being dropped from the wings of this. It looked like a bird, but it was an airplane. It you know it looked like a looked like a cross between a bird and a plane. And as he extended its wings, just like these, it looked like little little hypodermic needle bombs. But when I looked at them closely, they were people. And what the Lord said to me is, He says, "I am activating." healthcare workers. When you selected that field, God anointed you. God, hi, good morning, Christopher. Praise God. When you selected that field, you didn't just choose that field because you wanted to make money. You chose that field because God was setting you up. Kim, God, we're talking about a a strategy. God is weaponizing healthcare workers. He has given us three scriptures. I said, Lord, when you say weaponizing healthcare workers, you got to show me that in the word. And he took me to three passages, Malachi chapter four, verse two, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth as calves of the star. He says, so I'm arising with healing. Well, now let's look at Psalms 91. We say, says, who he, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty. He will, verse four, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. So who is under the wings of the one who, the son of righteousness, we are under the wings of the son of righteousness. So that tells us that when the son of righteousness arises, well, who is arising? That takes us to Isaiah 60 verse one, arise, shine. We know that the coronavirus does not 
cannot tolerate light. So when he says, arise, shine, the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So the Lord is wanting you to know today, if you know a healthcare worker, if you know a worse, a nurse, a doctor, a clinician, a CNA, this word is for them, Imani, that the Lord, the son of righteousness is arising with healing in his wings. And the healing that is in his wings is the healthcare worker. It's the nurse. It's the CNA. Now, in order for this word to manifest, someone has to activate the word. The word doesn't just, you see, the kingdom of God is multi, the, no, thank you, Jesus. Things are multidimensional. There is a spiritual dimension. There is a natural dimension. There is a spoken dimension. Okay. And there is a thought realm. So in order for things to shift from the spirit to the natural, from the thought to manifestation, there has to be something that activates movement that can shift it from the spirit and bring it into the natural. Now, everybody knows, you guys, if you've been around me any length of time, you know, I say all the time that all things are created for times. The first time it's created is when you think it. The second time it's created is when you say it. The third time it's created is when you write it down. The fourth time it's created is when it actually manifests in the natural. So we realize that in order to bring this revelation from the natural, from a spirit realm. Now, again, we talked about three things. We talked about three passages, Malachi chapter four, Psalms 91 and Isaiah 60 out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So when God gives you a revelation and an insight, it should be reinforced with multiple, with multiple, uh, components of the word of God. So now we realize that when he says and, and that the son of righteousness shall arise and that some with healing in his wings and that we abide under the wings of the most high, we now know that the ones who are under the wings are the resource that God is going to activate so that Isaiah 60 can manifest. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. So when the son of righteousness arises, Arises with healing, arises with healing in his wings. He's arising. The glory that's on you is what's coming up. Now to activate that from a, from the word of God that's do, that was that God spoke eons ago into a natural manifestation of something that can transact healing in somebody's life right now. Something has to be activated. And the way you activate it and you bring it from one dimension into another is you have to decree it. You have to say it out loud. So I want to encourage you to start saying this scripture. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I am the healing virtue that you have brought, that you are raising up and you are releasing into the earth. Now, how do we know that this is God's will? Let's go to the New Testament. First Peter, what did Jesus, the word of God say about Jesus himself bore sickness and diseases in his own body and by his stripes, we are healed. Now he also said in the New Testament, in multiple places, wherever Jesus went, he went and he released healing into the earth. He also said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, it didn't say that you have to lay hands on them. You got to pray a 15 minute prayer. You got to do three cartwheels. It don't say all that. It just says that you have to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now that dimension of manifested manifestation of God's word has to be activated with your spoken decrees. So when you walk into the room, you say, Father God, I am the healing. I abide under the shadow of your wings. You said in Malachi chapter four, verse two, that the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Well, who is the son of righteousness? Jesus, that's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. He is the son of righteousness. So where is Jesus now? Jesus lives in you. Why? Because he says that the kingdom of God is within you. 
It's inside of you. So where you go, the kingdom of God goes. Where you go, the son of righteousness go, goes. Where you go, healing goes. Now, when you begin to say out of your mouth, Lord, every person I touch in the name of Jesus, I release the healing from the wings of the son of righteousness. I'm the hypodermic needle that that lady saw that was, fly, that was shot out from an airplane, <laughs> looked like a bird, because he said... He will arise with healing in his wings. I'm the healing. I'm the one that Jesus said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So his healing is on you. His spirit is up is within you. He says that in these days, hallelujah, that he is going to release. He's going to activate you. And the kingdom of God is voice activated. So you must say these scriptures and you must say them in first person. So here, so if you are a healthcare worker and you are feeling overwhelmed, baby, I want to challenge you to do this. Just do it. The word of God says to prove me, prove me. He says, try it. Just do it. You, if, if there are no masks, and there are no respirators and there's nothing else you got but this word in your mouth, do it. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose because if you don't do it and they die, there wasn't nothing else you could do. If you do it, it just might be that you're the one that God wants to activate. And here's the thing. If you start doing it and doing it, and doing it and doing it. So, well, you know what, Lord? Like a little boy, I'll never forget the story of the little boy and all the starfish had washed upon the shore and the little boy was running on the beach as fast as he could. And he was to pick up a starfish and throw it back in the water. Pick up another one, throw it back in the water. And a man came along and says, why are you, throw, why, why are you spending your time throwing these starfish back in the water? They're going to die. He said, that one won't. Why? Because he acted on the one he could touch. So I want to challenge you to act on the one person you can touch. You are in the hospital and the spirit of God is in you. I challenge you, just do it. Just pick up one starfish and throw it back in the water. Lay hands on every person, and but don't just lay hands on them. Lay hands on them and decree this word over them and say, according to the scriptures, I am under the wings of the Most High. And the healing scriptures in Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 says, the son of righteousness shall arise with healings in his wings. I am the one under the wings. I am the healing that's arising. And as I I rise, I'm going to shine the light of this word, of this promise in your life. And you just say, Lord, I touch this person, Erica. The son, of light, the son of God is arising. He's arising on me. The light of life is arising on me. So as I touch these people, these signs are following them that believe in his name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Some, somebody getting up. I decree in Jesus' name. I'm going to touch everybody. I can't determine who's going to get up and who's not. But I know this. If I touch everybody and I say it and I say it and I say it and I say it, what will happen is the revelation will go from your head into the heart because belief happens in the heart and it ha you have the way you get belief from here to here is it has to come through here. This mouth is what activates the kingdom of God, which stirs up and chant, which mm, mm, I'm trying to keep from praying in tongues, y'all, because I, I just feel the spirit of God coming up in me. Okay. So what happens if you want to activate movement from revelation that occurs? Occurs in here. So what you just heard me teach you, these three passages, okay, that's revelation, that's insight. It hits your mind, but it has to move from the mind to the heart because belief happens in the heart, okay? Belief happens in the heart. Now to get it from here to here, you got to drop the word in the mouth. And when you decree the word, it'll, it's like pennies going into the heart. It's like every time you, every time you say it, a penny drops. Every time you say it, a penny drops. Every time you say it, a penny drops. And sooner enough, sooner or later, enough of that revelation is going to get into your heart and it's going to activate more and more faith. Faith is what moves God. 
Without faith, it is impossible. To, it, it is impossible to please God. But when you begin to get the word in your mouth, and enough of that word starts coming out of you over and over, you say, "No, what, Lord? I'm, you know what? That one may have died, but in Jesus' name, the next one gonna live. I'm gonna keep laying hands on them till till, till, till you raise somebody up, Lord. I'm gonna keep touching them, decreeing this word in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. In the name of Jesus, you rise up. In the name of Jesus, I command breath into your lungs. And there, there are 101 scriptures that you can begin." But there are two that you need to get in your spirit as you walking in these rooms with these people who can't breathe. You need to get the passage where the Lord says, I will breathe life into you. Okay. That book is, uh, that passage is in, well, I'll pull it. I'll pull, I'll post, I will post 101 scriptures with this post. So we are talking about a strategy for healthcare workers. If you know someone in a hospital, a nurse, a CNA, a doctor, a janitor, anybody that is spirit filled and born again, they need this word. So you, the Lord is activating you because this virus, y'all, this is a practice run. This thing, the enemy here is a practice run. He is, he is, he is introducing this. Yes, it is real. Yes, it is horrific. Yes, but let me tell you what, it is a foretaste of things to come. And if the first one shook you, the next one, the enemy is trying to, just trying to get you, it'll either shake. When things shake, they shake, they shake to tear things up. Or to put them in place. For those who believe the word of God, God is allowing the shaking so you can fall in your place. So you can take your authority. So you can activate faith, Erica. So you can activate power, Stephanie. So you can activate anointing. Because it is the anointing that removes burdens and destroys the yoke. It is the anointing that removes burdens and removes sickness. We have that power. We have that anointing. We have that capacity. And if you get it out of your mind, into your mouth, it will eventually activate sufficient faith so that you can begin to believe it out of your inner man so that the faith that you establish in your heart, like he says in the book of Hebrews, by faith, the world was framed or constructed by the word of God. So if you want to construct healing in someone's life, you got to get it from here, get it in your mouth, get it coming out of your mouth. And the more you say it out of your mouth, the penny keeps dropping. It drops in your heart. It drops in your heart over and over and over until enough is built up in your heart that out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And so eventually the time will come when you'll walk in there, there will, you will have so much of that word established in your heart because you've been saying it and saying it and saying it until it affects your belief system. And you'll start, the day will come when you will walk, I kid you not, in Jesus' name, I decree it. This day, I'm saying it. The day will come when healthcare workers, CNAs, nurses, doctors will walk down a hallway and every person in that hall will get up out of their bed well. I speak it into existence. I decree it so. I say it out of my mouth because God needs a decree to partner with. Why? Because where Jesus went, it says he healed them all, Abby. Jesus healed them all. All and that dimension of power, that dimension of anointing, Jesus says, The things that I do, even greater works shall you do. So, the day will come, healthcare worker. The day is going to come, nurse. The day is going to come, CNA, where you're going to walk down the hall and everybody in that room, hallway, in the, every room is going to get well. I'm speaking it into his ex existence because God says it is so. He says he wants to do that. It is not his will for people to die of a virus that the devil sent to destroy people and take them out. That's not God's will. So that's the word that God gave me. And that was the, that was the, that was the, a prophetic vision that I saw. I saw this. It looked like a bird, but it was an airplane. And as 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 it as the wings went out, it's almost like the wings did this. As they went out, you could see uh, like lined up little hypodermic needles hanging, and they just begin to shoot off. Like, and I looked, and it wasn't needles. It was people. And then the Lord gave me these scriptures. He says the healing that is under his wings, Vicki, is the believers 
who know the name of Christ. And he is, if you are in a hospital, if you are in a, in a nursing home, he says to start decreeing it. You have to activate faith in these these three passages and speak it out loud, say it and say it and say it so that the revelation can go from the head. As you say it, the mouth is what activates the kingdom of God. And every time you say it, it's like a penny dropping into your heart and the more of it falling into your heart, it will begin to build up as it build up in abundance. And the scriptures say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the what you decree, what you say, you create. We manifest it. We are the creative force in this earth that God put here. We have the same capacity to decree a thing and it will become established. To decree, to, the word established means to build, to make so and to have a foundation for other truths to be built upon. So we decree it. What are the three scriptures again? So I'm going to review this and then I'll, I'm done, you guys. I, 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 I just had to get this out today. So what did I, we are, we just, this video is for healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, CNAs, or any individual who believes in Jesus Christ, who names the name of Christ, who've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't, that's easy. We can fix that right now. If you if you're like God, I want I'm working the healthcare fields, but I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We can handle that right now. What you're gonna say out of your mouth is like, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and you rose again. So you can say that, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day, and I confess you with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead and that you died for me. And I receive you as my savior right now. Now just repeat those simple words. And if you want more information on what that means, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, we'll give you, go to the Kyle circle. That's our group on Facebook. C-H-A-Y-I-L, the T-H-E, C-H-A-Y-I-L circle, C-I-R-C-L-E. And we will give you some resource on what it means to be born again, because God wants to activate you. He wants to turn you on and he wants you to walk in this authority and in this anointing. It's coming. This has been done. It is done. God has done it. He is activating people. They're starting. People are starting to have a, a hunger for the supernatural, Debbie. God wants a hunger. They have a hunger for the supernatural manifested power that Jesus released when he walked the earth. And Jesus says, if I did it, you can do it. The same works that I do, even greater works than I did, are you going to do? And if G the, the apostles walked down the street and Peter's shadow, I believe it was Peter, Peter's shadow fell on the people who were sick on the side of the street and the people got up and got well. If Peter can walk down the street and people on the street and his shadow pass over them, I believe that a, a doctor can walk down the hallway and everybody in that hallway, a doctor under the influence of the anointing and under the influence of the activation of this word, he can walk down the hallway and everybody on that hallway get up well. I believe it because Peter didn't lay hands on any of those people that were on the side of the street. He didn't stop and lay hands on them. He just walked down the street and the virtue that was in him healed him. Jesus didn't lay hands on the woman who had the issue of blood. She just touched to him and his garment. So I just say any of these people that are sick that touch you by mistake, they just reach up and grab you. I've seen that happen in the hospital a lot. People in the hospital, they reach up and touch the nurse. And I say they'll reach up and touch a nurse and the healing virtue of God is going to be released. And they're going to go all of a sudden, that person going to be well, going to go. <sighs> and they're going to breathe in healing and release sickness. That's a promise. So that's what God gave me. I'm bold enough to say it. I believe that's what God is going to do. He is activating you. And when this happens, y'all please come miss it, tag me back and say that crazy lady with the, with the hair, with all the different color hair bands and the hair and the bracelets, that lady said, well, that lady saying because God said, God doesn't want you sick. He wants us well. I love you guys. I've got three things I want to mention, three quick announcements before I go. We're getting ready to, we are actually restructuring the Kyle Circle. The Lord has sent me some amazing team members 
And over the next couple of weeks, this will be in the month of April, we're going to be releasing three uh, free, this is free sign up programs. So you sign up programs. The first one is going to be the inside, uh, how to get the inside scoop. There's a lot going on and God wants to give you the inside scoop. He wants to give you prophetic insight, you for your life on what to do in these times. And we're going to be teaching how to access the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of insight, who knows things to come and shows them to you, who leads you into truth, who helps you separate lies from truth, who helps you, helps you separate deception. So when you're watching the news and you want, and you just like, Lord, I don't know who to believe. One time they say, wear masks. Next time they say, don't wear masks. One time they say that the, that this medication is going to work. The next time they say, they don't know if it's going to work. There is a spirit of truth that can let you know whenever you're hearing something that's a lie, the spirit of truth will show you, prompt you and teach you. We're going to be teaching you how to get the inside scoop. That class is going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Then the next class we're going to be reaching is preparing for the overflow. Preparing for the overflow. This is a four-part class that is about the activations. Just like I was just talking about activating nurses, healthcare workers, God is activating believers. He's activating you to prepare you to, one, to release signs, miracles, and wonders so that you can begin to do the works that Jesus did. Why? Because it creates influence for the kingdom of God. As he does, he's going to begin to show you how you, how to not go to church but to be the church this class has four parts the first part is soul to soul that is soul winning one-on-one -on -one soul number two soul how do you activate salvation soul to soul one-on-one -on -one. second part is from the altar to the assignment once a person gets born again they need to be equipped they need to be taught trained and developed and it don't take 10 years it doesn't take 200 hours it doesn't take a whole lot to get a person activated okay when jesus went and preached to the man when they, when they got off the boat and to preach to the crazy man that was in the tombs, Jesus, the people were mad and Jesus and the apostles got on the boat. The man from the tombs wanted to get on the boat with Jesus. And Jesus says, no, you stay here. When they, at that time, they wanted him to leave. That man preached that nobody taught him. Nobody gave him a vital sub, but he had access to the spirit of God and the spirit of God will lead you into all truth. That's why you need the inside scoop. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So once you get the Holy, get filled with the Holy Spirit and you have access to the inside scoop, then it turns a lot, all, a lot of these things because it says in the book of Acts chapter two, it says, and Oh God, hallelujah. So much, so much Veronica, so much Corky. So the Lord wants to activate you soul to soul, individual soul winning and from the altar to the assignment that is getting people activated and moving in the kingdom. And then the third one is activating harvesters. Once you're activated and the, uh, the fourth portion is about cultivating harvesting leaders. That means once you get to a certain level, Lindsay, God wants to turn you into a leader, but that leader has to be a replicable model. It means if people do what you do, say what you say and act how you act, will it bring glory, bring glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? So these are, those are the classes that are going to be coming up inside the Kayo circle. We're going to be teaching the classes. These are free. They're free to sign up for. Okay. I will have workbook resource and materials for them. The classes themselves are free. So anybody can do, can, can, can sign up for them. So be looking for that. I'm excited. I'm done. I love you guys. I'm always excited. If you are not a member of the Kyle Circle, make sure I will put the link for you to send a request to join because we have tons of resources in there to activate you, to get you moving, to get you to get you manifesting the kingdom of God and not just telling people uh, on the sly, hiding out saying you say, get out and get out in the open so that people will know him and whom you believe. I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Yeah, God will keep you. He will keep you. He will keep you. He will keep you. Thank you guys so much for being on here. I love you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Lindsay. And until next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.